my faithful friends. I'm Susie Snip, and you're watching Snips and Snaps. As usual, I'm on my mission to poke around and watch people use the English language. Ah, great. There's a group of children coming this way. And they're speaking in English. Look out, there's a snake on the road! Oh gosh, it looks dangerous! Maybe it's a cobra or something. Could it be an anaconda? Oh, don't be silly. Anaconda's only found in the Amazon. Don't worry, guys. I'm here. I'll save you. Now stand back. Uh, Ibrahim? I think we should call the rescue services. No, I'll handle this. Maybe we should just turn back and leave the snake alone. Only cowards retreat. Yeah, I have to be a large coward and be a dead hero. Shh, Yeah, you got my back. Ah! It's Penny. I've, I've got this stick. <laughs> guys, you can come on now. It's safe. I killed the snake. Oh, come on, guys. Ryan. That's me. Isaac William. Where are you? <laughs> the world would certainly be a safer place if we had more heroes like Ibrahim. Anyway, are you ready for my snoop report? Let's start with what Nazmi said. Look out, there's a snake on the road! When Nazmi said, Look out, there's a snake on the road, he was actually warning the boys. To warn is to tell someone that something bad or dangerous might happen so that they can avoid it or prevent it. So, when we warn someone, we are actually telling him or her to be careful. Here's Nazmi's warning again. Look out, there's a snake on the road! So, the form that Nazmi used was the sentence, Look out, there's a snake on the road. And his function was to warn the boys that there was danger ahead. Do you remember the question that Isaac asked about the snake and the reply that Ryan gave him? You don't? Well, let me refresh your memory. Could it be an anaconda? Oh, don't be silly. Anaconda's only found in the Amazon. Here we see Ryan's stating a fact. When we state something, we give information that is clear and correct. Let's look at that bit again. Could it be an anaconda? Oh, don't be silly. Anaconda's only found in the Amazon. So Ryan used the form, anacondas are only found in the Amazon, to perform the function of stating. What he did was to state a fact about anacondas. Let's move to another part of that scene. Remember the part where Ibrahim pushed everyone back and said that he would save them? What was his function in saying the words, Now, stand back. I'll save you. Now stand back. Now, stand back is a command. Here, we see Ibrahim commanding the boys to stand back, that is, to step backwards or sideways. So when we command someone to do something, it means that we give them an order that should be obeyed. Let's replay that scene again. Don't worry guys, I'm here. I'll save you. Now stand back. Now stand back was the form that Ibrahim used to command his friends to let him handle the snake without any interference from them. Remember the suggestion that Isaac made to Ibrahim about getting help to deal with the snake? Let's listen to his suggestion again. Uh, Ibrahim? I think we should call the rescue services. No, I'll handle this. Looks like Ibrahim didn't quite agree with what Isaac said. 
we know that Isaac made a suggestion. He suggested that the rescue services be called in. When we suggest something, we tell someone our ideas about what they should do. Let's watch that again. Uh, Abraham, I think we should call the rescue services. No, I'll handle this. The form, I think we should call the rescue services, was used by Isaac to perform the function of suggesting. He used that form to suggest what he thought they should do. There we are. That was my sneak report. And now, to scout around for more. The water's cold. Yeah, but it's very relaxing. A book? This probably belongs to them. Gee, I wonder what they've been reading. Excuse me! Excuse me! That's my book you're holding! Hi! Don't worry, I was just looking. I wasn't going to take this book away. Hi, I'm Tasha. And I'm Noah. And I'm Susie. Hey, I was wondering, what were you reading? Well, let me show you. We were reading this story. Ah, oh, how Dalat got its name? Wow, that's a lovely story. I remember reading it some time ago. But I've forgotten the details though. Well, we were just reading it actually. Our English literature teacher, Juan... Sharifa wants us to read and understand it before class tomorrow. Ah, so you've got homework. Susie, why don't we read it together? Maybe you can help us understand it a little bit better? Sure. And I know exactly how I can do it. But first, let's get some shade. You lead the way. Okay, okay let's, let's go. go. Ah, this is just perfect. Girls, I'm going to get my friend Mrs. V to help us with this. Oh, great. Where is she? She's over there. Oh, Mrs. V, we need you to help us with uh, 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 the story how Dada got its name. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. V and welcome to the Literature Room. Today, I shall talk about a short story entitled, How Dalat Got Its Name. There is a small town on the Oya River. It is a peaceful, pretty place. But the town has a strange name. It is called Dalat. Dalat means flies in the Milano language. Why should a town be called after these insects? The reason lies a long, long way back in history. Once upon a time, there was a pleasant small village here. Nobody remembers its name. It was ruled by a wise old chief who had three sons. Then the time came for the chief to die. He was a very old man. Our late chief has gone back to our ancestors, leaving behind him three sons. We have mourned for him for one hundred days. Now is the time to appoint a new chief. The eldest son, Galao, shall be chief over us. 
I pray that he will rule us wisely. Galau is a good fellow, but he's a bit soft-boned. What use would he be as a chief? A chief doesn't have to be a strong man. Your late father was very old, but he was the best chief we have ever had. Ah, we were just lucky that there was no war. I respect my late father very much, but he would have been useless in a fight. Everybody stared at the young man. How could he say such a thing about his own father? Yes, what use is a weak, soft bone chief if there's a war? Galau knows the laws and the customs, but does he know how to fight? We want Umar for our chief. If our old enemies come back, can Galau lead us? Or will he hide behind his grandmother's skirt? The enemies live a long way from here. There has not been a war for many years. Why should they come and attack us now? My brother Galau should be the new chief, and my brother Umar should be the leader of the fighting men. My brother Galau should be the new chief, and my brother Umar should be the leader of the fighting men. Then the meeting broke up. Nobody sat in the highest place. There was no new chief. After the meeting, there was no peace in the village. In the farms, the farmers talked and argued. On their boats, the fishermen quarreled. The women who were washing clothes by the river talked about Galau and Umat. Soon, Galau and Umat refused to talk to each other and no longer visited each other's houses. Then... One morning, Umat was missing. We think we know where your brother has gone, Chief. We think he has gone to meet our enemies. What for? Well, I don't like to say what for, but I think we should build a tall, strong, long house. If there is a war, Simple village houses are not strong enough. A war? Do you mean to say that my brother is behind all this? Brother, we shouldn't ask why and what for. Let's just tell the men to build a new house. We can start tomorrow. The next morning, Galau called a meeting of the village men. They agreed to build a strong tall longhouse that was far off the ground for everybody. Every family got one room in the new house. Every night, some of the young men kept watch along the river. They had axes and heavy knives with them. Galau had told them to cut halfway through the trunks of the trees by the riverside. If enemy boats come down the river, a few blows will cut the tree down. Maybe Galau is not a very brave man, but he is a very clever leader. His wisdom is as good as another man's strength. One dark night, the war began. Umat and the enemies attacked the village, but Galau and his men were ready. For three days and three nights, the fight continued. Many enemy soldiers were killed. In the end, those of the enemies who were still alive crept back to their boats and paddled off. Shall we follow and kill them all? No, let them go. They have learned their lesson. We must bury the dead and comfort the living. Galau had spoken truly. The village was a sad sight. Dead bodies were lying on the ground and floating in the river. Lots of flies buzzed around the place. Galau's men collected and buried the bodies as fast as they could. They found Umat among the dead too.
He was my brother and my father's son. He was younger than I am. I should have looked after him. This was once a happy village. Now the smell of death is in the air. Black flies are everywhere. I will call this village Dalat. Flies. Nobody shall ever forget. And so it happened. Nobody talks about the war between the brothers and the blood in the streets nowadays. But the people of Dalat know the value of peace and friendship. They have never forgotten. The first moral value is to always listen to the advice of the elders in your family. The next one is love your family members. The third value would be to respect your customs. The fourth value is not to be too ambitious. And finally, the value that we learn from this short story is to remain united and to live in peace and harmony because that's very important for all of us. Let's move on to the themes. There is one main theme in this short story and it's about greed. Umat was both ambitious and greedy and fought with his brothers, resulting in the death of many innocent people. It is important for us to remember how important a family unit is, as well as to remember that customs and traditions keep the village going. Man should not be greedy because it will eventually destroy lives. Well, that's all for now from the Literature Room. See you soon. Bye! Wow! I love the story with its animation and all. I hope it helped you get a better picture and to understand how Dalat got its name. Yeah, it did. I know what I'm going to do. Hmm. I'm going to work with my classmates to write a script and dramatize the story of Dalat at our school's literature night next month. Whoa, that'll be great. Maybe I'll come along and see your drama. Oh, please do, Susie. We'd love to have you there. All right, then. Time to go. I've got things to take care of. See you when I see you. Bye. Bye, Bye Susie. Footsteps. That's a good sign. Ah, there he is. again. How do you do? My name is Ibrahim. Fine, thank you. My name is Nazmi. What are you doing here? I'm just sitting around. This is a so beautiful place. Yeah, it is. The perfect getaway. Clean air, no traffic jams. Just nature for miles and miles around. Exactly. No stress. You know, when I'm here, Surrounded by the sights and sounds of nature. I'm not boring at all. Yeah, me too. That's why I come here. To get away from it all. <sighs> oh, hi. Yeah, how are you doing? Hello. Oh, I love that game. 
Okay, that was my iPod. Oh. Yeah, just give me the codes. I'm in level 5 already. Oh, yeah, the internet can get out of there. The website? Yeah, what was the website again? Okay. Okay, what was the website? Bye. This is a great place. But I have to get home to my PC and electronic gadgets. Can't live without them. Bye! <sighs> Ibrahim has to learn to get the best of both worlds. My snoop report tells me that Nazmi made three grammatical mistakes in that conversation. I hope you spotted them too. Let's see what they are. Here's the first one. My name is Ibrahim. Fine, thank you. My name is Nazmi. <laughs> Whoops, wrong response. <laughs> you see, when someone greets you with a how do you do, you should reply with a how do you do. It's incorrect to say fine, thank you, because that is the response to how are you. Get it? Let's see that mistake again and how it should be corrected. How do you do? My name's Brian. Fine, thank you. My name is Nazmi. How do you do? My name's Brian. How do you do? My name is Nazmi. So remember these greetings and their responses. Reply a how do you do when someone greets you with a how do you do reply a fine thank you when someone says how are you one down and two to go here's the next I love sitting here this is a so beautiful place hmm <laughs> a so beautiful place I should think not well I think I know what Nazmi was trying to say but he used the wrong adverb it should have been very instead of so. You see, we use very when we are simply giving information. We use so to refer to information that has already been given or already known. We say, he's a very tall boy, not he's a so tall boy. We say, Linda is a very hard-working girl, not Linda is a so hard-working girl. So here's what Nazmi should have said. No, I'm just sitting here. This is a very beautiful place. And here's the last mistake that Nazmi made. When I'm here, surrounded by the sights and sounds of nature, I'm not boring at all. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, Nazmi, you're not a boring person at all. You just used the word boring incorrectly. Nazmi should have used the word bored instead. Listen to what he should have said, and then I'll explain why. You know, when I'm here, surrounded by the sights and sound of nature, I'm not bored at all. When we say that someone is boring, it means that that person is not interesting at all. You can't have fun with a boring person. But Nazmi wasn't saying that he was a bore. What he was referring to was the way he was feeling about the environment. So, he should have used the word bored instead. Remember this, bored and boring are both adjectives. The one with the ed ending describes the person who has the feeling. And the one with the ing ending describes whatever gives him or her that feeling. Well, that's enough of mistakes for a day, I think. See you in a bit. It's been a very exciting adventure. It comes with being a snoop. Anyway, I overheard some of those children using some very interesting expressions today. Here's one of those idioms. Hi, William. Hi, Noah. So, are you ready for your school's final examination tomorrow? Yes, but I have butterflies in my stomach.
poor Nawal. She had butterflies in her stomach. And poor William, because he really thought she had butterflies in her tummy. Do you know what that expression really means? Well, it's an informal way of saying that you feel nervous about doing something. You can also use the expression without the words in my stomach. So, Nawal could have said it this way. Hi, William. Hi, Nawal. So, are you ready for your school's final examination tomorrow? Yes, but I have butterflies. Here's another expression that I heard in the conversation between Tasha and Ryan. Hey Ryan, did you mind to deliver the parcels to Mr. Singh? No, I didn't. It's still here in my bag. But why? Oh, it was a wild goose chase. There isn't any house with that number along Jalan Kasawari. Well, we can't blame Tasha for thinking that. But that wasn't what Ryan meant. He meant that he was looking for a house that didn't exist and wasted a lot of time doing it. Well, English has many funny expressions like that one. But then again, that's what makes it a very interesting language. Alright, that's all the time we have for this episode. I hope you had fun learning English with me, Susie Snoop. So, do remember to catch episode 5 of Snips and Snaps. See ya.